What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having a spectacular day. Today we're continuing along with our fall planting. On the last video, among other things, we got this plot here behind me ready. Got that compost kind of raked out evenly, got it tilled, so it's ready to plant. So we're going to be putting some drip irrigation in. And we're planting lots of neat stuff in this plot today. We're going to be planting some carrots, orange carrots, red carrots, yellow carrots, purple carrots, some parsnips, which I've never grown before, beets, white beets, red beets, gold beets, and maybe even some lettuce. We'll see if we are able to get all that planted today, but that's the plan for this plot. And we're going to try to knock out as much of it as we can. So let's get started. So I've already came out here and kind of laid out the manifold for our drip system in this plot. And a lot of times I do save these from season to season because we can plug the existing holes in there with goof plugs. We can plug the holes in that main line and put new holes in it as our row spacing changes. And so I will reuse these until the point where they just get a bunch of different holes in them. And then I'll put some new main line in so that's what i've done here just got the main line running the width of the plot there and we got our uh, pressure regulator and our filter our water hose hookup right there in the middle of the plot so we get some even water distribution there so we got that laid out we let the sun work on that a little while because uh they usually have some memory from being rolled up in a coil that's how they're packaged so let it sit out in the sun a little while and uh, it'll lose that memory and lay flat and straight for you. So the majority of the stuff we're gonna be planting in this plot, we're gonna be putting on double rows or planting double rows of it, one row on each side of each line of tape there. And normally I plant carrots, beets, things like that on a three foot spacing. That's kind of my standard spacing for fall crops. But sometimes with those double rows, especially if you get a lot of carriage carrot foliage then getting in between those rows to harvest the spacing can be a little tight especially if you're scooting a big basket uh, between the rows there so I've got enough space in this plot I think I'm going to end up with seven rows total with everything in here I got enough space to do it on a four foot spacing as opposed to a three foot spacing so that's what I'm going to do give myself a little more room give the kids a little more room when it does come harvest time to get in here and grab the stuff and get it ready for the kitchen. So I'm going to go grab some steaks, go ahead and lay off where these rows are going to be four foot apart, and then take the wheel hoe and make us some furrows there for burying our drip tape. Got the feeling in your bones, make you feel right at home. furrows made all seven of them there so that's the F part of our fad system and now for the A part which stands for amend we're gonna put one of these scoops here of this 855 in each of those planting furrows And then for the D part of our fad system, we've got our drip lines. Now I've got a little bit of this 15 mil roll left over in case I need it. And I've got these older lines here that all should be the same length, should work great for these rows here. So we're gonna hook those up. If any of them are super leaky, I'll replace them, but uh, hopefully they'll still be in good shape so we can reuse this stuff. But before we go to hooking up that drip tape, I wanna tell you about this nifty little tool here. I got in the mail the other day that's going to make laying drip tape a lot easier or hooking it up a lot easier. So in the past, as far as punching the holes in this mainline tubing here where the drip pieces go in, use this little yellow hole punch here. And these things work all right for about the first 30 or 40 punches or for one season. But after a while they rust a little bit and they just don't punch as well and it can be kind of aggravating to get a good hole punched in there. You see that one's kind of dull. I can't really get a good hole punched in there. It kind of just caves in the tubing. 
But this thing right here is like a little punch gun. So I don't know if you can see there. When you press the button there, that little thing comes out. So it holds the tubing up against here. You just press it in there like that. You can hear it pop and it makes a nice little hole there. And it's so much easier just squeezing this thing than kind of pushing and twisting this thing here. Depending on what size tubing you're using, you can adjust it here on this end and make it this piece here go closer to that. You can even change these tips here. This is the tip I need for the size drip fittings I use. But if you use larger drip fittings, you can change those um, the little punch there. Twist that out and change it for a bigger one. Here's the sheet of paper that came with it. So you can see there, right there, different punch sizes and everything. Or if this punch here goes dull after a long, long time, you just replace that piece. You don't have to replace the whole thing. So I've tried this out a little bit so far. I really, really like it. It's so much easier, so much faster than uh, fighting with this old dull booger right here. So I'm really, really excited about this. Um, I'll put a link below. I bought this off Amazon. I think it was like 25 bucks or so. As with most things in life, you get what you pay for. These are about five or six dollars, and they're worth about five or six dollars. This is about 20, 25 dollars, and it's worth every penny, in my opinion. So that worked out pretty well. I was able to fill all seven rows there with some recycled tape and I didn't have to reinstall the fittings there on the uh, the row starts or the ends because they were already there. I just had to punch a hole and uh, snap those puppies in there. That's one good advantage to having everything somewhat standardized here and these six plots at least is we can pull up old tape, save it, reuse it in another plot because all the rows are always the same length. Now, let's see if this tape's any good still. We'll hook up our water there and uh, check for leaks before we bury it. Well, looks like we've got a few leaks we need to fix here. There's one right there. There's a geyser over there. Maybe two or three, not too bad. There's one right there. We'll get those patched up real quick. All right, so we got the tape patched up. You can see a little coupling there that we used to patch it. We just cut the bad spot out and connect it back together. So we'll be able to reuse this tape at least one more time here. I don't think those holes were caused by anything in the soil. Probably got cut by something be sitting in the back of my buggy there. I didn't do the best job of storing them well, but uh, at least we'll get one more season out of this tape here. So now that it's inflated, as you see there, we'll grab the wheel hoe, and we'll cover it up and we'll be ready to plant. All right, now we're finally ready to plant. Carrots first. A few things about growing carrots. I talked about in the last video how we want to have some fluffy soil. We want to have some soil that doesn't crust over bad because that can impede the carrots emerging through the soil. They take a while to germinate. Another thing is you want to plant them in a place where you don't have a really high weed seed bank because they're going to take seven days to germinate and you're going to have to give them a lot of water over those seven days. And they're a little slow to go even when they emerge from the soil. If you've got a lot of weed seeds in your soil, those weeds are going to outcompete the carrots really quick. So pick an area where you have kind of a low weed seed bank where if you're watering something every day, you don't have to worry about just weeds being everywhere. You may not have that option, but try to reduce your weed seed bank a little bit before you plant carrots because they take so long to germinate. Now, down here we can plant carrots two times out of the year. I can plant carrots right now in the fall. We overwinter them. They're usually ready in February or so. I can plant another round in February or March and those usually come off a lot quicker, usually by the listed date on the packet. Now, those spring carrots to me don't taste near as good as these overwintered carrots. And the spring carrots don't hold very well in the ground. 
So that's one reason why I like doing these overwintered carrots, because I can plant them now, and as they start getting some size to them in mid to late winter for us, we can just start pulling a few here and there. We don't have to worry about harvesting them all at one time. They're there. It's cool outside still. Nothing really is going to happen to them. And so we can just harvest them as we need them. We don't have to worry about gathering them all at one time. If we do grow the spring carrots, they can get woody on you as it gets hotter. And I just don't like growing them in the spring as much. I've grown them in the spring with success. But my favorite way to do it is to overwinter them like we are now. And I'm not sure how cold a temps carrots can take, but I think they can take pretty cold temps. So most people should be able to overwinter carrots. You just gotta get your planting time right. You wanna wait till the soil cools down a little bit. You're looking for something in the mid 70s range. For us, anytime in October usually, I planted them early October, mid October, late October. Any time in October is a good time for me down here in 8B in South Georgia to plant carrots. And then as far as planting the carrots, it's hard to plant carrots too thick. Now, if you're a market farmer and you're going for consistently sized carrots, you probably want to use pelleted seeds and really be careful about spacing them out. If you're just a home gardener like ourselves, plant them puppies thick. You'll get some little carrots, you'll get some big carrots. The little ones are great to eat. The big ones are great to eat. Plant them thick so you get a nice dense foliage canopy there and it'll shade out any weeds. You won't have to worry about a whole lot of weeds and you'll just get a really thick row of carrots. So when you reach down there and grab a bunch of them tops, you'll pull up a good little grocery sack of carrots there. So it's hard to plant them too thick in my opinion and I don't ever thin mine. We just plant them thick, let them go. Now unless you're planting carrots in a little bucket, a little container or a little raised bed, when you're buying carrot seeds, go ahead and buy the bulk option, whether it's 1,000, 5,000, 10,000 seeds. With a little pack, you're not gonna make it very far down the road before you run out of seeds. Or if you try to make that packet stretch for a whole row there, you're gonna end up not planting them as thick as you need to plant them. So it's a lot more cost effective to go ahead and buy the 1,000, 5,000, or 10,000 seed option. And um, that's what I've done here. That way I know I have plenty of seeds and if I've got more seeds, I'll tend to plant them thick like I should be doing. So let me go over these varieties real quick. This Miami carrot here I got from High Mowing. I talked to you about that last time. It's been many, many years since I grew this one, but I remember it being a really, really good carrot. We've got this other orange one here called Napoli. Never grown it before, but uh, I'm in a few market farming groups on Facebook, even though we don't market farm anymore. And I've heard a lot of people talk good about this variety. So I'm looking forward to trying Napoli. So those are the two orange carrots. And then we've got Yellowstone here, if I can turn it the right way. So I've grown that. I think I grow that one just about every year. That's a good yellow variety. And then we always grow some purple carrots red carrot sometimes but I've never tried these varieties so we've got dragon here and then we've got red sun here and so I've got anywhere from 1,000 to 5,000 to 10,000 seeds in each of these packets right here like I said it's more cost effective to buy the bulk option and that'll make sure we get them planted thick and because I know I really like this Miami variety I'm going to plant a whole double row of those guys and then we're going to split the red sun and the dragon do half a double row of each of those and then we're going to split the napoli and the yellowstone do half a double row of those so that give us three 30 foot double rows of carrots way more carrots than we need but a lot of people around here count on me for carrots you know come mid to late winter time so we'll have plenty to share so we've got our drip tape right there. We've got a little mini furrow here and a little mini furrow here. So we'll plant a row of carrots here, a row of carrots there. Once they get up, they'll cover this empty space here, shade out that. We won't have to worry about any weeds in there. Once these things grow up a little bit and we'll have a ton of carrots from just this one row of drip tape here. So I just pour them out a little bit in my hand here. And the way I do it is you want to sprinkle them in a band. So it's not like corn or beans where you're just wanting it in a linear row. With carrots, you kind of plant them in a band. So that's why I just kind of start sprinkling the seeds in a band here in this little mini trench. 
And then once we've got those carrot bands in our little mini furrow, we want to be real careful not to cover them up too much. You don't want to plant these things too deep. We just lightly, lightly kind of just bring in that little furrow right there. And then I always like to tamp them down there with the rake, get some good seed to soil contact. All right, so we got our three rows of carrots in. Now it's time for these parsnips. Now I know absolutely nothing about growing parsnips. I do like to eat parsnips. They're pretty good roasted in the oven, but I've never grown them before. Don't know anything about it. I assume it's kind of like growing carrots, so we're gonna treat them like carrots. Now the seeds look a good bit different. You can see that there. They kind of look like big pepper seeds almost. They're a lot bigger than carrot seeds. I only have a thousand of these, and um, I don't know if I'll do a double row. I might just do a single row. We'll just see how it works out spreading these seeds. But uh, here goes nothing. So I did have enough parsnips to do a double row there. These seeds are a lot bigger. I sprinkled them in a band just like I do the carrots, but you're not putting out near as many seeds because the seeds are bigger. We still got a decent amount of seeds in there. Hopefully we put enough seeds in the ground for a good stand. Now the last thing we want to get planted today are beets. And I've got three different colors, three different varieties of beets. We've got Merlin, which is a really sweet red beet. Grown it many times, it's a good one. We've got Boldor, which is an orange beet. I've grown it before. It's a really good one. Then we've got a white beet, although the packet's not white. It's called Avalanche. Never tried it before, but it's supposed to be a little less earthy. Maybe Brooklyn will like that one. She's not a huge fan of beets. I'm not, like, just overboard crazy about them, but I do enjoy them roasting in the oven. They're fun to grow. The kids really like growing them, so we grow beets. Um, I think I'm going to get two rows. I think I'm going to do one row one double row all merlin and then split a row with the gold and white beets and we're going to plant these thick just like we do the carrots just like we did the parsnips kind of the same concept there kind of sprinkling them in a band now when we were market farming i would do a lot of transplanting with beets because i was really wanting consistently sized beets beets are a multi-germ seed which means each seed is going to have two to three sprouts coming from it and so they're going to be a little bit crowded there if you're not worried about consistent size a lot of times they'll just move each other out of the way and it'll be just fine well we were market farming i wanted everything kind of be the same size because it just worked better packing so i would start these in seed starting trays in the greenhouse and i would thin them out to one seedling per cell and then we transplant them in the garden since we're not market farming anymore that's not a huge deal so we just direct seed them in the ground just have them in a big bunch or a big band right there all different size beets you know you use the small ones for pickling you use the big ones for cutting up and roasting just like the carrots it's nice to have a variety of sizes of the beets along the row there and i should mention how much seeds i've been using here i know me just saying planting them thick that doesn't really mean a lot to some people so on the carrots i was using at least a thousand seeds per 30 foot double row so if you're planting a 60 foot single row you probably need a thousand seeds or if you're planting a 30 foot double row at least a thousand seeds or so that's how thick i was planting them not saying you have to plant them that thick that's just how thick i like to plant them the beets here i've got a thousand seeds in each of these packets so i can plant them thick that way i don't have to skimp on my seeds and i can get a real nice stand all right all right all right feels good to get them six rows in the ground I feel like i'm a little bit late doing that but i'm probably just right given what the weather's been doing still got that one row of drip that doesn't have anything planted on we'll be putting some lettuce there we've got some good looking transplants in the greenhouse just running out of time today now carrots as i told you before they like the soil to be moist not super oversaturated but just a moist seed bed for at least seven days for good germination now i've had the drip running this entire time we're planting so that's soaking a little bit but i'll run the overhead sprinkler on this for probably 30 minutes or so tonight maybe a couple times tomorrow and then we'll soak it uh here and there with the drip tape as well just let it run for several hours into the whole seed bed there it's kind of soaked and that will ensure we get some good germination just want to keep it keep it watered i mean if you don't get any rain 
you should be watering it every single day for good germination now some people I've seen if they're doing it in raised beds what they'll do is they'll water it real good and they'll cover it with something and that kind of holds the moisture in there and they'll just check to make sure they're germinating and then pull the tarp off when they are that works well too but if you're doing it in ground like we are just keep the seed bed moist for seven days or so the beets aren't as slow as the carrots to come up but they'll get the same treatment being in the same plot the parsnips I have no idea about those we're going to give them the same treatment because they're in the same area as the carrots and beets hopefully they like it so as these things germinate in the next week or so then we'll start talking about our feeding program with all these crops in here and for most of this stuff we're just giving it a balanced fertilizer and we put the 855 in the furrow at planting and then we'll run some balanced stuff through the drip, whether it's AgriThrive, whether it's some of that 777 uh, from Nature Safe, that corn steep liquor that's water soluble. You know, anything that's kind of balanced. We want good strong tops on this stuff, but we also want that potassium and that phosphorus for good root development because all these crops we planted today, the thing we're going for is the root. And then the beets have one little extra thing that they like. Beets like a little extra boron. So there's a bunch of different micronutrient supplements out there. Uh, I can't remember the one I've been using that I got off Amazon, but most all of them have boron in it. So pick up one of those and mix that with whatever balanced fertilizer you're using so the beets get some you know, extra boron there and that usually makes some nice pretty beets. You can tell how good beets are gonna do by looking at the tops most of the time. If you got big pretty tops, you're gonna end up with some nice good sized beets. Now if any of you out there have any tips on growing parsnips, please do let me know. I know the beets will be ready much sooner than the carrots in this plot. Are the parsnips something I'm expecting to overwinter and be ready when the carrots are ready or will they mature faster like the beets? Any other tips and tricks you may have, please fill me in on some parsnip growing info. If you haven't already, head on over to our website at LazyDogFarm.com where we've got some really good recipes, our garden blog, recommended products, some cool Lazy Dog Farm merch like this hat and this Never Stop Growing shirt right here. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, ring the bell, like, and share, and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Oh, well. Mm -hmm. By the beauty of your life